Hey guys, welcome back. Um, it's it's pretty easy to you know throw out a text design or something like that, just a text only design, and uh, you can use flourishes like these to dress them up, and and they're all over. You know, you can find these free, uh, or you can buy them in packs pretty cheap or whatever. Um, but they're not very hard to make yourself. Um, these are different elements, and generally what you can do is you can create your own and then save them and make sure that you save them as a SVG because if you actually like this page if I export it as a PNG they're all going to be one image so I'm not able to separate them without tracing a bitmap but if you take something like this um, and save it as a SVG you can come back and add more elements to it and just keep going and then that way when you're working on a design you can come back and just grab whichever elements you want and add that into your design so you know you're guaranteed that it's going to be unique and original um, and they're you know I, I enjoy kind of making them and this late this most recent uh, version of Inkscape has made it pretty simple to make them and if you look you can uh, let me scroll in here real quick if you look you can get uh, pretty intricate with them um, all these are just little you know uh, the end pieces are just little elements that I've created and attached them uh, to the swirls but we'll take a look at uh, how easy this actually is to do some of this other stuff like the geometrical patterns these are real easy too um, depending on how long this video goes uh, I may show you actually let me go ahead and do like how to make these long tapers and stuff you can use them by theirself and just you know for the edges of a word you know if you're wanting to extend it out so that it'll match the rest of the of the design um, and you can just take your rectangle tool and you'll come out uh, let's go ahead and turn that stroke off by turning uh, to turn that the stroke off you just hold down on shift and then hit the white X that gets rid of your stroke and we'll go ahead and make that black um, let's see okay um, now you're always when you create something like this um, it's always if you look down here um, it'll say a rectangle uh, and if you create, you know, your edit pass by nodes, you actually don't have any nodes. The only thing you have is where you can uh, you can round the corners of the uh, rectangle off, but that's about all the freedom you have outside of outside of resizement. Uh, so to create something that you can manipulate, you actually go up and you go to path, object to path. Then, as you see now, we have four separate uh, little squares, and these nodes are actually maneuverable. And the easiest way to create these the tapered triangles as you come to one end grab both uh, grab both of the nodes select both of the nodes and then you'll come up here and put join selected nodes and that right there creates the peak um, and then if you want to create this uh, you don't have to I mean this right here actually works this tapered triangle will work but if you want to create that peak inside there the probably the simplest way to do that is grab both of these nodes come up here and where it says insert new nodes into selected seg segments uh, and then that will create that uh, middle node now deselect everything and then you'll come in and select that middle node and then holding the control button you just pull out to whatever desire you know whatever you're wanting it to look like you just pull it out to that length and these here you can do a lot with them um, and then you know as far as like this one here it's got the stars this one up here uh, I didn't pull them out as far and it's got circles but as you can see I mean there's a lot of stuff in like this you would just uh, uh, taper you know there's several ways to make diamonds uh, you know you would just actually insert a node like how we had nodes on both ends you'd insert that node into the middle of the uh, the middle of the rectangle um, and then you'll select the ends the same and then that way your middle would stay wide and it would taper on the ends uh, but anyway so that's you know that's a simple way to dress up graphics pretty easily and you can use these like I said you know if you've got uh, say uh, a short word like like four or something like that um, in your graphic you're actually able to take that and what you want to do is um, let me let me scroll out a little bit here so it's not so crowded um, but like let's say that was something that's real you know small in our graphic and we're just wanting to take extra space up because we got larger words on the top and bottom of it uh, so you've got this here and then what you will want to do is you'll right click this uh, click duplicate and then come up here to flip flip selected objects horizontally and flip that and then with that then hold control 
grab that new object you've the one you duplicated and bring it over to this side and then that way that's going to create that space to where if you had a larger word here and a larger word here it gives this one word uh, the balance within that text design uh, so anyway that's that's one way but the flourishes let's take a look at that what you want to what you're going to do is you're going to grab your bezier tool right here you can grab it here or you can also just hit uh, b on your keyboard keyboard and that switches over to the bezier tool now you'll see different modes up here. Uh, this one here, the create regular uh, Bezier path, this will allow you to, like if you hold control, that'll bring it straight out. Um, and you just click at the end of wherever you're wanting to be. If you're only wanting that line, then you would hit enter and then you've got that line. Um, but what we're wanting to do for these, uh, uh, for these flourishes or whatever you want to call them, uh, we actually want to do create spiral path. And as you'll see, when you come out, like, you know, we click here and then we come out and then wherever you want to go, this will take a little practice, but honestly, within 15 or 20 minutes of messing around with it, you'll kind of get the feel for it. But say you want to come out and you want to start creating a curve here. So you go ahead and click uh, and then see as I pull down, it'll create that curve and then say I want to click here and it'll create another curve and another curve and another curve. But now as you'll notice, uh, so I say I want to stop it here on that last click that I hit enter but as you notice this is all one size and see how these are tapered what you need to do uh, to make it tapered is you'll actually come up uh, back to this menu and what you do is come down and you can choose like with these I chose ellipse uh, so then now what we you know what we've got is we'll come in here like this and create whatever you want to create and then now you see it's tapered. Of course, it doesn't look as fat as these, but with this new, I, I guess it's, I guess it's with the new, uh, the newest Inkscape because I don't, I don't remember it being like this before. Um, but anyway, you, so now you have your little scroll laid out there, and you can come up to Edit Paths by Nodes, click that, and then you'll see this little circle. And that circle allows you to actually fatten fatten the design up however you, you know however wide or you know narrow you want it uh, you know and that's just really it's fun to mess with actually I'm, I'm kind of enjoying it uh, so uh, but anyway so we got this little scroll here and then a good way to create you know say like a leaf shape these here are, are uh, more tribal looking but like say you know a little leaf shape like that you can just drag a uh, an oval out like this and then go to uh, path uh, and again, the reason why I'm doing this is because, see, we have no way to manipulate that. Just like with the rectangle, all we have is we can, we can, uh, you know, create a Pac-Man. You know, we can kind of change the sphere of it. Uh, but other than that, we don't have any control of it. So we'll come up here to Path, Object to Path. And then now if you go to Select Paths by Nodes, you've got your four nodes. Uh, and to create that leaf design, probably the simplest way is to go ahead and grab uh, one of the ends of it. And then you'll come here to make selection nodes corner and double click that and then as you see that created uh, go back to the selection tool and that created a uh, you know a ta one tapered end and you can stretch it and thin it out uh, you know however you want to do uh, but anyway and so after that you know really all you want to do is you just want to um, kind of size it um, to whatever you think is going to work for your graphic you can actually rotate it around um, something like that and then you know again I mean this is where your your personal design creativity is going to kick in how you want to make that look uh, but whatever shape you can you can create all kinds of different shapes uh, whatever you want to and uh, you'll come in and then then whatever you think that that would probably look a better a little smaller not that small um, but however you want to make that look and just kind of go around and just make it look like it's part of the design and then once you have it set in there like that and say you're happy with this all you'll need to do is rope around the whole thing uh, come up to path and union and now it's all one piece so that way no matter what you do when you resize it um, you're going to be resizing the whole thing if you move you know like if you go back to your nodes and mess around all of it is one unit now uh, instead of having that separate piece 
uh, it's all gonna it's it's just one one element now so that that makes it easier to work with and it's something that'll give you symmetry and it's easy to work with as far as trying to create a more complex graphic um, you know because symmetry when you're hand drawing symmetry is a real pain in the butt I mean you know it's almost impossible uh, but with Inkscape or you know any vector program that that's a good thing about it is what we can do is click uh, duplicate and then again we'll go ahead and flip this one and then we can come out here uh, holding your control button and you come out here and however you want it wherever you want it you can actually group them together like this and if you get it to line up pretty good uh, and you just keep kind of adding to it uh, or you can just kind of run over like that and then this right here by itself uh, we can actually grow uh, rope around them and then we'll go to path uh, union and now that's all one piece and even this just by itself you know you can kind of shrink that down and stretch it out uh, and and that may look good for whatever you're trying to do uh, you know you can even uh, flip it to where it's underneath something and then you can flip it to put it on the top uh, you know however you want to do but um, anyway this is just a quick tutorial this is uh, this is actually the second second video I put out today but I wanted to put something you could kind of play with I, the the video I just made was just about uh, uh, exporting PNGs and DPI and it's not really fun stuff that you know just stuff you kind of needed to know but but this here is actually fun it's it's enjoyable to kind of play around with this stuff and like I said once you get done uh, creating your designs make sure to save them as an SVG file so that you can come back in and you can actually use these div uh, individually uh, for whatever your project requires and then that way you always kind of have your own stock and and there, here's another thing guys you'll actually if you look on Etsy or uh, even I think one called like creative market but you know if you kind of play with this and enjoy doing this this actually is a product of its own you know this is something that you can sell uh, to other designers so this could be worth kind of pursuing, and, and if you really enjoy it and you're able to come up with some pretty uh, cool stuff that you think people would like, you can actually create these SVGs uh, and even PNGs, you know, depending on whatever the end user is going to be wanting, uh, but, you know, uh, kind of get in the know on this. And this is actually a, a, a sellable product. These, these things... Uh, because these are SVG graphics, these can actually be used on the like the Cricut and the, there's one called Silhouette, but like these, you know, these uh, cutting machines used for craft, you know, used by crafters and stuff. Uh, they uh, stuff like this they can add to their stuff, you know, where they can actually cut stuff out with it. And then some people will use these for uh, creating, uh, you know, like wedding invitations and, and business cards and different stuff like that, you know. So because uh, everybody doesn't necessarily want to mess with doing stuff like this but since you're kind of checking out the video you obviously you know like like playing around so this might be something you want to pursue because like i said instead of worrying about creating a coffee cup or a t-shirt design or something like that you can just create a page of these and then literally etsy allows you to um actually sell digital products and this you know this would just fit in there perfectly so you know you got a 20 cent upload uh and then uh you know if you want to run ads to it or whatever to get some traction on it but uh you can literally just you know upload your svg and png just kind of research the competition and see what they're doing and then you just kind of mimic as far as their files and stuff don't mimic their designs but as far as their files and what they're offering uh just kind of read their descriptions and see how well they're doing and then just that that's the the shoes you need to fill so to speak is whatever you know if they're saying they're create they're showing uh that they uh you know supply a svg and a png or whatever um and then that's you know you just follow suit with your own designs and you've got a marketable product that's actually no hands there's no third party it's literally your graphic once they pay uh they've got etsy set up to where you can uh they'll uh, just once once they pay for it it literally will just go straight to them and that's it you know you get the profit uh etsy gets their cut and then the uh, end user gets their their designs to work with or their elements to work with so that's something to consider uh, you know while you're while you're learning inkscape because I, I think that's a viable market uh, i've noticed there's some people with just thousands and thousands of feedback and and sure maybe you can only sell this for a buck fifty or two bucks but i mean once it's done it's done and you can still use it in your design there's no exclusivity so you can still use this in your design work and then also sell it to other designers so it's kind of killing two birds with one stone and possibly creating another source of income for you uh but anyway that that's all i'm uh 
uh, got really for this video. Like I said, with this one here, I think this one's kind of cool. Uh, but, you know, it took me, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes to a half hour, something like that. And again, just these little shapes, you create those, and then you can see I just resized these. Um, and you just play around. All these are is just shapes. Like, I think all of these are actually just circles uh, or, you know, a, a, a ellipses that I had... Uh, you know, like the ovals or squares or whatever that I had just, uh, you know, I had, uh, you know, just manipulated into the shapes that I want, you know, and you can create these little points and, and different stuff like that. So, um, but anyway, guys, hopefully that helps. I, I think this will be a lot of fun once you get, uh, you know, comfortable with using the Bezier pen. Uh, I think these are actually a lot of fun. I enjoy doing it. And like I said, you're actually creating a marketable product at the same time. So it's something to look into. But uh, anyway, if you got any questions or comments, uh, feel free to post them below. I hope this kind of gives you some ideas and something that you uh, enjoy playing with. And, and uh, again, uh, just keep enjoying designing those T-shirts, guys.